Hello dear students, welcome to the course of Engineering Thermodynamics. Myself, Mihir Bisri, Assistant Professor from Mechanical Department of LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. So today we are going to continue our session on introduction and basic concept. So in previous session, we have already discussed about some important concepts like microscopic and macroscopic view, then other properties, right, then concept of continuum. So let us discuss the session in further. So today we are going to discuss about two major categories of the properties that is intensive properties as well as extensive properties. Now intensive properties means what? Very simple, the properties which are independent of the mass, they are known as intensive property, right? For example, pressure, right, temperature and density. Let me explain to you simple way. For example, let us consider that this is a metal rod. Now, if this metal rod is having temperature of 50 degrees Celsius, now if I will cut this metal rod into two equal halves, then those two equal halves will also have the same temperature that is 50 degrees Celsius. Now, here, if you will think logically, then I have divided the mass into two portions, right? So, if I am changing the mass, or though I am changing the mass, the property is not getting changed. So that is why the temperature is the property that is independent of the mass. So same concepts can be explained for other properties also, right? Now the next concept is extensive property. So extensive properties means what? The properties which are dependent on the mass, they are known as extensive properties, right? For example, volume, energy and mass, right? So these properties are dependent on mass. So let me give you another example that I have two halves of this rod, right? And if I will join these two halves, then what will happen? Its volume will increase, right? So obviously, if I have these two halves, and if I join these two halves, then its volume will increase. So if I'm increasing the mass, the volume is also increasing. That is why it is called as extensive property, right? Further, adiabatic and diathermic. Now, what do you mean by adiabatic and diathermic? Let us understand. Right? So adiabatic, the word adiabatic means what? So for example, as you can see on the screen, that why we have a system and surrounding, in between these two, we have a boundary. Right? So now adiabatic means the heat cannot transfer from the system to the surrounding or from the surrounding to the system. There will be no heat transfer. That is known as adiabatic. Right? Then other word is diathermic. The meaning of diathermic is what? Very simple. Let us consider again one more system and surrounding together with the boundary. Right? So now the heat can transfer from the system to the surrounding or from the surrounding to the system. That kind of system will be known as the diathermic boundary or diathermic system. Right? Further, thermodynamic equilibrium. It's a very important concept. You will understand that. So basically thermodynamic equilibrium can be understood by approaching three ways. That is, very first is mechanical equilibrium, second is chemical equilibrium, and third is thermal equilibrium. So first of all, what do you mean by mechanical equilibrium? Simple, let us consider the system and surrounding like this. Now if in this system, there are certain molecules present, Right? So as of now, if you consider two molecules, so these two molecules in the system are having same pressure. That means there is no unbalance in the force within the system. And also if you will observe closely, then outside the system the same pressure is maintained, that is 50 kilopascal or 50 pascal. Right? So here, for within the system also and between the system and surrounding also, there is no pressure change. That, that means what? That means no unbalanced forces, right? So that kind of system will be known as mechanical equilibrium. So there is no pressure change within the system and within the system and surrounding. So that is called as mechanical equilibrium. Clear? Now, further, chemical equilibrium. So very simple. Again, we will take a system and surrounding. So if there is no chemical reaction within the system and between the system and surrounding, then it will be known as the chemical equilibrium, right? Further, the third kind of equilibrium is very important, that is thermal equilibrium. Simple, again we will take a system and surrounding like shown in the screen. So if you observe over here, in the system we have temperature of 50 Kelvin and outside the system also we have temperature of 50 Kelvin. So there is no 
temperature change within the system and between the system and surrounding. But for achieving the thermal equilibrium, two prerequisite conditions are there. That is, you should have the mechanical equilibrium also, you should have the chemical equilibrium also. Then there should not be any temperature difference within the system and between the system and surrounding. Then and then it will be called as thermal equilibrium. And together, if we have all these three equilibriums achieved, then it will be known as thermodynamic equilibrium. Clear? So it is very easy. Again, I'm repeating. If you want to achieve thermodynamic equilibrium, then it is combination of mechanical, chemical and thermal equilibrium. Okay, now we will move forward to next important topic that is quasi-static process. Now, quasi means almost and almost static process, right? So we will understand it by a simple illustration as shown in the screen. So let us take a vessel. In this vessel, certain gas molecules are present and above that gas molecule we have a blue color piston as shown in the figure. Now the red colors are denoted as the stops. So piston can not move beyond this stops, right? So now what will happen? At right now we have the gas or the gas is having right now a particular position. So if we plot that particular position using a diagram, right? So what we can do is we can plot that on y axis like state 1, right? Also, we have to appreciate over here that in order to keep the motion in steady condition, we have put one weight W above the piston, right? So what will happen? The weight mg which is acting downward direction is balanced by the uh, pressure exerted by gases in the upward direction. So if the both forces are in equilibrium, then the piston will be in steady condition. Right? And at that steady condition, the state is defined by point number 1 as shown in the y-x axis. Right? Now, what I will do? I will remove the weight. So, if I will, as soon as I will remove the weight, then the piston will try to move in upward direction and it will occur a new position or it will achieve a new position. Right? Because of the gas pressure forces in the piston cylinder cavity. Right? So, here, the new position can be shown by point number 2, right? So now if you observe, if I will join from point number 1 to point number 2, then I don't have any intermediate points. This is, this is a real life process or immediate, immediate process or a faster process, right? Now let us understand the approach in different way, okay? So for that, what I will do? I will divide the whole weight into different segments. So as of now, in this picture, I have divided the weight into five segments. Now what I will do? I will remove each individual segment one by one. So let us observe what will happen. So as of now, this particular position is highlighted in the diagram as point number one, right? Now if I will remove one weight, then what will happen? Obviously, the piston will slightly move in the upward direction, right? So that new position will be achieved. So this new position can be de defined as point number two. Further, what I will do is, after a certain time, I will repeat the procedure again and move one more weight. So if I will do so, then what will happen? Again, the piston will achieve a new condition and that condition is defined by point number three or you can say point number B in our cases, right? So this point number B, if you, I will re repeat this position or if I will repeat these steps, then what will happen? The piston will slowly, slowly will reach up to the point that is to the stops, right? To the final position and that is highlighted by point number two. So piston will reach up to the point number two after slowly, slowly movement in the upward direction, right? So if we plot all the points together, then between 1 to 2, we will have 5 different segments, right? So now what is the difference between the previous procedure and this procedure? The difference is using this particular method, we can find out intermediate states for any process, right? And this is a very slow process. So this kind of process is known as quasi-static process. Quasi means almost static process. Right? And quasi-static process is also called as reversible process. Reversible process means what students? Simple. If you 
do the same thing in reverse direction. That means if you will put the weights again back, then you can go from 2 to E, E to D, D to C, C to B, B to A, and from that to 1. Right? So likewise, same procedure can be repeated in different or reverse direction. Right? So that is why it is called as reversible process or quasi-static process. Remember students, all processes or all reversible processes are quasi-static processes. Clear? Now, zero law of thermodynamics. Very simple. What is the zero law of thermodynamics? So as you can see on the screen, if we have three bodies, let us say body A, B and C. So if the body A is in equilibrium with body B thermally, and if body B is in thermal equilibrium with body C, then we can say that body A is also in thermal equilibrium with body C, right? So that is the simple law of zero law of thermodynamics. And you can say that zero law of thermodynamics defines temperature, right? Further, temperature scales. Now temperature scale, there are three different kinds of scales. That is Fahrenheit scale, Celsius scale, and Kelvin scale. But to define this case, before 1954, there were two reference points that was ice and steam at one atmosphere pressure. But after 1954, triple point was added as, as another reference point. And for your reference, the triple point for ice water mixture is 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. Triple point means what? The whole, all three phases are co coexisting together simultaneously. That is solid, liquid, and gas, right? Steam point temperature of at one atmosphere is also 100 degrees Celsius, right? And ice water temperature mixture is 0 0.00 degrees Celsius. Now, to convert Fahrenheit into Celsius and Kelvin into Celsius, you must be aware about the conversion, which is already given, right? Now, further, homogeneous and heterogeneous system. So, let us understand that. Very simple. Homogeneous system is what? So, first of all, if you have any one phase existing, that means either solid or liquid or gas, then it will be known as homogeneous system. And if you have more than one system or more than one phase existing together, then it will be known as heterogeneous system. For example, you might have the combination of solid, liquid. You might have the combination of solid and gas. Or you might have a combination of solid, liquid, gas together. So that kind of system is known as heterogeneous system. Three phases or more than one phases are existing together simultaneously. Clear? Now, one more task for you guys. That is identify the following systems type whether they are open system or closed system or isolated system. Okay, thank you very much.